Hello everybody. Welcome to our podcast. Today we have a wonderful guest with us. Uh, she is joining us today from Perth and uh, luckily Australia uh, is I think in the post covid phase where they are happy and lucky going out watching matches uh, meeting each other normally the way we used to do in early <laughs> 2020. uh but things are uh, very good there uh, we are lucky enough to get uh, kama here and she is going to talk about how uh, her journey of weight loss uh, is there and then she has compared that to how marketers can do things uh, i will let her uh, describe more about it but uh, let me tell you a brief about her so she is somebody who is into digital marketing for last 10 years and somebody uh, i feel Uh, we will have a lot of experience there because the whole industry has changed a lot so if somebody uh, is there for last 10 years they have seen the journey of uh, coming from maybe uh, google plus coming into place and then google plus dying they have seen uh, twitter come into prominence or maybe facebook come into prominence and then facebook killing the whole organic reach and those kind of things so uh, when we talk to people like these we know that they have been to uh, through thick and thin of uh, digital marketing which changes every 6 months because people at these companies are developers and developers love changing the algorithms <laughs> so uh, best part of kama is uh, she has been featured in a lot of uh, uh, places so she is a contributor at social media examiner she is a contributor in social bakers and data box and she has written a lot of content uh, do check out her uh, website which is kama.social she is a consultant and she gives uh, has done a wonderful work there and uh, you can see her work there other part is uh, she is a guest lecturer at western uh, australian university then ecu and other universities so i love that part where uh, people learn few things in their daily life and also contribute to the people who are coming next in the batch so maybe there might be people who will be joining marketing but then the professors and everybody are not able to give them what is happening actually in the market and with social media i think uh, this thing is very necessary as all the marketers around us we should always try to contribute uh, to the next generation a lot that is something that i believe in uh, welcome uh, kama welcome on board and uh, thank you for joining us today you are so welcome thanks for having me yeah so let us begin uh, by the first question that i have uh, why uh, was it necessary for you to start uh, keto uh, and uh, so you did your weight loss with keto and maybe what was your motivation to start with and uh, if you can brief us about that so i kind of just decided on a whim um to try keto it, i'd heard about it a couple of times and i i thought the idea sounded really simple and i thought i would just give it a go because i had quite a lot of um weight to lose um and it sounded like you know you still got to eat a few interesting things it wasn't too restrictive as a diet um so i thought well you know why not give it a try and see what happens and um that was just over a year ago now that i started that so yeah yeah, yeah. so i think uh, best part which i see it is a year ago and you are still following it right yes yep i've still got a a little way to go so i'm definitely going to um keep doing it until i've reached my goal um but beyond that uh, i don't actually see myself going back to um eating you know a carbohydrate based diet as much as i love bread um and pasta and rice um it just it doesn't really suit me um so it's it's definitely not something that I'll go back to not to say that you don't have to treat yourself once in a while yeah. um but you're definitely going to to stick to more um protein based low carb after after I've, I've got my 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 goals down pat so that I can um maintain um and not you know undo all the hard work that I've done <laughs> <laughs> true so uh that was the part of where your journey started with the base weight loss and how did your journey started as a marketer so were you uh, doing your courses in marketing in the earlier college or were you always interested in it or there was a trigger point which just uh, got you flipped i'm lucky enough to be old enough that i kind of fell into digital marketing um because you couldn't study it when um when i started 
um, you can study it as a, you know, a small part of a, of a um, internet um, degree or um, what did they use called computer science. There would yeah. be a little unit on, um, on social media. Um, so I have a past career in hospitality. So I've run um, hotels and um, pubs. And I did that for 17 years. And I really, um, I was looking for things to do to get out of that because I was kind of, I'd lost my passion for it basically. Um, and I loved it for a really long time and it, and it served me really well. And I got to where I wanted to go um, in that industry. And then, and I couldn't really figure out what the next step was. So um, one of the hotels that I was running didn't have a very good marketing budget. And Facebook was very young then. And, um, you know, it was before pa people used pages. We just used to create a profile with the hotel's name. Um, and so I started posting on the, I made the Facebook page and I started posting on there to um, try and get a bit more interest in the restaurant. And I noticed that, um, you know, if I posted the, the pizza special of the day or whatever it was, that, that um, it would sell out. And okay. if I post it, it wouldn't. And I thought, oh, okay, so this is really, really effective. And it's also really fun. And, you know, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of skills um, in hospitality that are quite similar to, to marketing. Um, and, it, you know, it's about presentation. It's about how you handle things. It's about messaging. And so um, I think there were a lot of things that were transferable. But breaking in um, as an intern in your 30s, oh, is, that's not the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, and I was lucky enough that I got some opportunities to to learn from some some of the kind of first um, social media specific marketers in, in Perth and who I still call my friends today. And, um, and then, yeah, basically, um, I guess my management background and my... Um, being able to, to understand subtext with talking to people and um, uh, from hospitality really helped make that transition. Okay. The story sounds very interesting. I, have, I heard a lot of people uh, who were maybe working in pubs or maybe uh, associated with something and then they turned into marketing. I think the vibes are there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean... You've got your um, community, you know, so you've got your regulars and then you've got semi-regulars and people that you just know their, their face, which is yeah. the same as you run, um, you know, your social media accounts. You, you, there's the people that always comment, there's the people that you see around. Um, and then you've got, you know, the negative people, which are people who, you know, maybe complain about their food or um, people who have too much to drink and you have to tell them it's time to go home. Um, so, you know, you've got that negative side as well. So being able to... And I guess the, the other similarities between at least social media marketing and, and hospitality is that everything's always changing because it depends who's there at the time. Yeah. And, and uh, so I think there's a lot of transferable skills there. But yeah, I mean, you couldn't, I think now a lot of, a lot of um, young people know that that's what they want to do or they want to be entrepreneurs. So they study um, social media marketing because it's such a big part of, of marketing as a whole and, and running a business. But um, it wasn't, it, yeah, it was, for me, it was kind of a little bit of, a, of an accident, but it's a happy accident. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're happy at the end of the day, I, I think accidents are good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you've got to go with the flow, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. So how did the flow uh, go for you when you started weight loss? And how are you uh, comparing that to the marketing thing, which you uh, presently do? Uh, so I think... Getting, it, getting into the flow for me was about um, finding people that I could learn from um, and that would uh, take the time with me. I think when I first tried to get a foot in the door, um, nobody, people in marketing agencies didn't want to hire someone with no marketing experience. In fact, you, if you didn't have a marketing degree, um, they wouldn't even look at you. Um, so, so any of your previous experience or, or any of your skills that you might have developed along the way um, outside of a structured educational background weren't really given any, um, any priority at all. So I was lucky enough that, that I got given a, an internship and um, after, at the end of that, they asked me to stay on. 
and then um, I worked for them for, for a few years and another couple of agencies and now I am out on my own. Okay, looks great. I think we can do another podcast of uh, your experience as an intern. <laughs> 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 I, I would like to hear those stories a lot. I saw the movie Intern and then I was very intrigued by the fact that somebody at that age uh, did an internship and then the cultures are very different and then you coming from a different background and tra- uh, the part of uh, internship is that you are hungry for learning new things. Yeah. And uh, then somebody at the other end also needs to reciprocate the same kind of uh, faith in you that you are making mistakes and then they say, okay, no issues. Uh, there is always a next time you will learn with that time and you need a right mentor at that time. So that is very yeah. important. Uh, coming to the uh, weight loss thing, uh, camera. So uh, th- this is where you got somebody, uh, you were an intern somewhere, you learned marketing and then you moved into that. So for your weight loss things, uh, weight loss thing, uh, the process was same. Yeah. So you started off as an intern and then you were like just testing waters if you are able to do that or not. Or you were determined enough uh, from the first go that yes, I want to do this. Uh, so I think I think my journey with weight loss is kind of probably a little bit similar in the fact that I, I, I almost decided by accident that, that that's what I wanted to do, that I wanted to, you know, try keto. Um, and I didn't really... I didn't really know how to go about it. I didn't want to sign up to, you know, a, a, a expensive meal plan or anything. And I just sort of figured it out as I, as I went along. Um, and I, n- not in the same way as having necessarily good mentors um, in that sense, but I did um, join a lot of Facebook groups and a lot of, you know, looked at a lot of Pinterest boards and things for what people were doing and, and what their stories were in, in terms of, their journeys and you know it's all very um individual as to you know how much weight you've got to lose and um what sort of body type you've got and and how old you are and and how active you are and all those kind of things so no one's journey is the same but if you can sort of start to to see patterns a good marketer will always start to see patterns um and then and then work out okay well i'm in that situation and i've hit a wall so um, I need to change a variable here somewhere and this is what this person changed and that was their result so maybe that'll work for me um, and then just sort of you know eliminating those um, those factors until until you're back on track so I guess it's kind of similar <laughs> I'm not really um I guess I'm not really a planner I just, <laughs> just um, decide to do something and then kind of just figure it out it's like <laughs> great I think most of the campaigns that we do as marketers are uh, people say, oh, you have planned so many things, but nobody knows that the things were not planned the way they were going. The first post went, then the second one, and then we felt that we should change the course and then we should go in this way. Well, I think, I think in one way, people look at that as a failing as like, you know, if you don't have it all planned out, you've done it wrong. But especially with digital, I mean you've got to go with the data, right? So you can have the most perfectly planned campaign down to, you know, the exact time that this piece of creative is going to go live and, and all of that kind of the exact audience. And and you can be wrong, you know. Ooh. Something that you just pop up on a whim um, can, can fulfill the goals uh, much better sometimes. So you really do have to keep it... Um, keep it moving and I think that was one of my my points as well um in in my blog post is you know you've got to have goals but you've got to be able to keep them fluid um and reassess and and based on the data that you've got great uh any other points that you feel uh were same on both ends whenever so we see weight loss and then we see marketing patterns in some uh, patterns is something that I am very fond of in first place as a marketer that you said, uh, you need to be good with patterns. So there are a lot of tropical things which come up. Uh, something happened in the city, something happened in the state or maybe country. You need to jump on that wagon and then do those things. What were other things that uh, you found interesting on both parts? I think um, speaking of patterns, I think it's really interesting that um, uh, 
you know, there's so much data out there working out how to interpret that and which data to listen to and, and applying, you know, human reasoning to that is um, really it's something that's really interesting to me. So, for example, in terms of weight loss, I mean, people will jump on the scale and they'll say, I'm not losing weight. And it's like, well, your body's completely changed shape or your genes have just fell off, you know. So yeah. um, there's there's lots of different ways you can measure things. And, and if you're just looking at, at one way, it might not be giving you the results, um, the data that you actually need. And maybe you do weigh the same in kilos, but... Um, you know, if you've quite clearly changed shape, um, then you're still you're still reaching your goals, which is not necessarily to weigh less on the planet, yeah. um, more about being healthy and 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 looking a way that makes you feel comfortable. Okay, so maybe that might be related to a uh, few people losing uh, fat and then gaining muscles. So then the weight is almost same, and then but they have actually. Uh, uh, lost a lot of fat and then gained muscle. So muscles also uh, have a lot of weight in that way. Uh, they might look leaner uh, when you look at them, but then again, they are not uh, leaner on the weight scale. That is the whole thing. So uh, that happens with a lot of campaigns also. Sometimes we see uh, we are not getting engagement, but then uh, we uh, should not just see it by a number of likes that we get. But then also a lot of uh, people don't see the number of shares or maybe number of saves which are there. So a lot of carousals on Instagram today, uh, don't uh, yield a lot of likes but then you see a lot of shares are there and a lot of saves are there so I think that is something that uh, I can relate to uh, what you said with uh, what happens in marketing not always that uh, things are in the correct course that uh, you won't get uh, same likes on all the postings maybe some other parameters are there which might would have clicked Great. yeah and and maybe you're not looking for likes in the first place you know so so Measuring them is, you know, silly. I mean, I think the Instagram was a really good example because, you know, you won't necessarily get loads of engagement on your Instagram post, but your Instagram shop could be cranking. So, yeah. you know. Great. That happens a, uh, to a lot of people because uh, people chase numbers and then they don't chase conversions. So... Yeah. <laughs> Depends what you're trying to do. But if you're trying to sell something, I mean, you know. You want the conversions, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, number of followers don't matter. How many uh, things you are selling from your store matters a lot. And yes. uh, yeah, so uh, that is one. So uh, what was something which uh, kept you going? So it was a year's process. And what is one thing that you saw that uh, this is one thing which kept uh, us going? And in the same ways for our campaigns also. So sometimes we see that this campaign is going and we push the pedal. But then sometimes we just stop that campaign. So how do you relate both the things? So I think that's probably two um, aspects to it. One is one of the things that kept me going is the progress. So I guess in marketing terms, that's the data side. That's um, that's knowing it's making a difference. That you know, get having a benchmark, um, or in which well, in this case, several benchmarks. You know, you have weight and then you have inches. You know, you measure different your different body parts for different inches and and that kind of thing. So um, being able to see those move, that's, the, I guess, the data analysis part of it. And I love that, um, uh, you know, seeing those numbers go in the right direction is, um, is, is you know, a marketer's favorite thing other than spotting patterns. Um, and I guess the other aspect is um, I, felt, I felt better. Um, and so I guess that's probably more like, the likes and the and the comments and the social engagement on a campaign, um, because it's it's indicating to you that this is popular and this is um, this is you know their vanity metrics so yeah. that you feel good. Okay, I think the uh, the whole thing is related to uh, release of dopamines. Whenever yeah. we see we see good numbers and then we are happy with that and then instant gratification and those kind of things come into place. I think that might be uh, one of the triggers uh, which keeps you going on that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think so. I think if I hadn't had good numbers, I probably would have lost enthusiasm. Okay. So uh, how do you measure or uh, how, how do you uh, choose good numbers or maybe uh, keep targets? So uh, for Facebook, uh, suppose there are more than 270 parameters which you judge on. 
so maybe people uh, so there are a, a lot of things that people can say that this is going good and this is going bad and those kind of things but uh, for your campaigns or for the campaigns that you do for clients uh, how do you measure those things that these are the right kpis for a client because kpis would be different from client to client and then sometimes uh, something which is working for one won't be working for others so how do you judge those and how do you relate that to your journey so i think I mean, it really depends on on what you're trying to do for each client. So I do a lot of uh, marketing for events. And so obviously what one of the things we're looking at is, is awareness, which is really easy to measure because you, you've got your social engagements and that kind of thing, mm. um, which are really important to make the event seem like it's good. Um, but on the other side of that, obviously, we track um, number of conversions, conversion costs, um, you know, return on ad spend, um, and and those are the kind of things that you know matter to the client the most. At the sure. end of the day, events have to be profitable for them to stay in business. Um, but you can't necessarily do one without the other. So it's yeah. not so much that um, you need to just have um, one set of of goals. You need to kind of break it down and say, well, okay. Um, we're going to run a conversion campaign, but these people have never heard of this event before. So let's, you know, let's warm them up a little bit. Um, let's set some some goals before that, before we get to there. Um, and let's have some really good retargeting audiences from people who've watched our event video or who have um, said that they're going to, you know, that they're um, attending um, the Facebook event or um, have, you know, uh, been been engaged with the account in the last however many days since the ticket sales have gone, um, have launched. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that, that you have to set yourself up for the main goal. And sometimes if you just said, oh, I want to lose um, 50 kilos, yeah. I, I probably would have given up by now because it's been a year and I haven't lost 50 kilos. So, um, you know, it's obviously a failure, um, but it, you can't yeah you've got to break it down into stages you've got to have like mini goals or in between goals or whatever you want to call them so it's easier to you know to break it down into chunks yeah something that just clicked me was uh, like you were saying that so there comes awareness then uh, you do uh, you make a facebook event and then people like those events uh, maybe are liking some posts or maybe are engaging with that event and those kind of things and so there are a lot of other uh, different venues people watch your video and those uh, things so I just uh, got a click that whenever you are hitting a gym or uh, something of that sort. So there are a lot of other, uh, a lot of different machines which you have to use. So some machines are for your shoulders and some are for legs and those kind of things. And in the same way, if you want one result and then you are trying a different machine, you won't get it. So if you're looking for video views, I think TikTok would be something which people might use uh, currently. And depending on what brand is, it is. But then uh, TikTok, YouTube are the uh, platforms that you can push a lot. And if you are trying to build a community and those kind of things, the, then there are different platforms for the same. I think uh, that is something that I got uh, just a click that I think uh, that might be very good as an example to tell people that this is how things go. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, if you're relating it to different ways of, of losing weight in a gym, I mean, you can't, like, what if you only ever did leg weight and you had, like, really slim muscu muscular legs and the rest of you were still all blobby? Yeah. Great. So I think uh, takeaway from that is don't just concentrate on one social media platform. There are a lot of them. And then uh, because I know a lot of people uh, who say that they are maybe Instagram masters, they are LinkedIn masters, and they are maybe Facebook masters and those kind of things. But as a brand, I think for brands, all the things are important at the end of the day, at least two or three social media platforms are. Yeah, look, I think that if you're going to specialize in a in a platform, that's that's really good. Um, it means you know you know one inside and out. But um, I think a lot of those people aren't practicing marketing. The people who specialize in in one particular platform are often just uh, they're often consultants or educators or you know bloggers or or whatever, and they you know they're not necessarily running campaigns for businesses. Yeah, true. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people in that segment. They get, uh, so few people get there by fluke, few by their luck. And <laughs> so, uh, 
so uh, maybe they were uh, at right place at right time for one occasion uh, and that uh, created that buzz so th there are a lot of ways but i think uh, slowly and gradually everybody understands the platform and uh, if they start following the same thing uh, it will happen uh, can you uh, help us out with the campaigns part uh, how do you uh, plan the campaign and other part is uh, so you talked about events and uh, then uh, currently uh, everything is online for events also uh, maybe in australia events are happening offline but uh, in majority part of the world events are online so how was that shift for you for from maybe uh, planning their campaigns in the offline segment also which was a opening a omnipresent channel so somebody would have billboards or somebody would be doing newspaper ads and those kind of things and now everything is online you have to do conversions also online so was it good uh, for you uh, or was it bad oh it uh, it was different i think um for paid events when they were online we're back to doing in person events yes. here um but when paid events were online i think they were a quite a tough sell um because there were so many of them all at once and a lot of businesses put them on for free just because they wanted you know to to speak to their communities and stay relevant um or well, they sold their advertising spaces in yeah. um, And so, uh, for example, I had a conference that I was um, that I was contracted to to sell tickets for, which was initially an in-person conference and then became an online conference. Okay. Um, and so, you know, they had all this all the uh, speakers um, in rooms and, and and that kind of thing. So it was it was set out in a in a very organised way, and, and they dropped the ticket prices. Um, because obviously there wasn't the as much of the networking aspect, um, and you don't get to meet the speakers. Um, you know, rub shoulders with the with the famous people when you're yeah. when you're sitting in a Zoom call. But um, it was hard because they were everywhere. So there was nothing, and then there was so many. And cutting through that noise of oh, it's another online event. What's the good yeah. about this one? Oh, and I have to pay for this one. But I think for me, it um, it made us look at um, running campaigns on different platforms. So for example, that conference, we focused more heavily on LinkedIn advertising than we did on okay. Facebook, which um, we did predominantly Facebook in the in-person event because their events are just so robust. Um, but yeah, a lot of LinkedIn and the, the actual conversions on that were really good. Um, and you know, you hear a lot about LinkedIn Conversions being really expensive, but they actually were cheaper than than the Facebook ones in this instance. So um, I guess it just depends uh, on your on your content. But it it's harder to plan um, because it was a bit it was a little bit unknown. Um, and I think events are always quite fluid um, because you know you have a guest and you don't have a guest, and then you have um, a venue and then something happens to that venue. You sell too many tickets, you have to go to a bigger one, and and so they're always a bit uh, yeah. like. And then having to, to move to online and, and the clients figuring out the tech and figuring out, you know, what, what they're capable of in an online sense. So everything was, was new, which to me anyway, there'd be loads of people who were really experienced at um, marketing online events, but uh, yeah. we have to get experienced very quickly. Great. I think it is good that uh, their things are back to normal and offline events are also uh, happening. Which is good. I think uh, we uh, rest of the world. I think uh, will get that uh, there. I think in next six years, uh, six months. <laughs> Let's see. Let's hope <laughs> that happens. Um, okay. Uh, other thing was uh, how uh, realistic should be as a company or as a consultant while telling it to the client that uh, these are the goals that you might achieve with this kind of budget because uh, most of the clients don't know uh, a lot of social media platforms and how they are working. Maybe uh, and a lot of times what happens is whenever a client comes, uh, they have their own perception. If somebody is a heavy user of YouTube, they feel everybody is on YouTube. Uh, I have faced that. Uh, so have you uh, ever faced th those kind of things? Because client is adamant that they want to advertise or push uh, a single platform only. And then you know that that platform is not working. Something that I like to try and do, if it's, if it's not going to hurt the campaign overall is to let the client see that their idea didn't necessarily work against mine. 
So that gives them the, the ownership that I didn't say no to their idea, unless it's so terrible um, that they they got to have their dog in the fight, you know, and then we just, and then I say, well, we'll let the data decide. And then at the end, if, you know, if my campaign it wins, then they usually go, oh, okay, um, maybe I don't know what, you know, maybe I should leave it to you. I think in the beginning though, um, if someone's not going to trust you as the expert, it, it, it's going to be a tough relationship with that client anyway. Um, you know, it, it's one of those industries, I think people think, they all think they can do marketing, especially digital. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't go take your car to the mechanic and then stand over him going, I think it's that bit, um, you know. So, so it, it, it's tough. I think the hardest part is um, when your client is not the target demographic um, because they'll go, oh, yes, we need to be here. And it's like, well, you're a 48-year-old man um, with four children and we're trying to sell tickets to an underage event um, for, you know, 17-year-old girls. Um, so it, you're probably not in their head um, as much, you know, you probably don't know as much about them as you think you do. So, so that's tough because then they, they're sort of applying their own filter of how social media works onto um, onto your campaign, which, you know, you have to set that expectation really early, I think. Okay. So uh, thanks a lot uh, for sharing so many things. We are moving in the last leg of our podcast where uh, we have a segment where it is for people who want to learn and continuously learning. That is why they are listening to the podcast. But uh, how, what is your uh, learning mechanism? Because uh, this is an industry which keeps on changing. So how do you uh, grab the latest information? Uh, maybe it is uh, just by experimenting that uh, you do, or maybe you are reading something on continuous basis. I, try, I read everything. Um, I've got, you know, there's, um, on Instagram, if I need to know how the latest thing works, uh, I read Jen's trends. Um, I'm in Matt Navarra's Facebook group yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, you know, a whole bunch of really prominent, um, social media bloggers and social media publishers that, um, that I read religiously. Uh, and then it, it is a lot of just your own experience with doing this been doing this for quite a while now so um there are a lot of things that i i know from experience and then obviously there's things that always um come out of the woodwork and surprise you but um being able to sit down and look at the data and not just you know the lifetime data but is it you know how's it going over the last seven days is it trending up is it trending down i think having those problem solving skills to work out you know okay well i think Let's change out the creative, see how we go. Um, yeah. And being brave enough to test things. People don't, people aren't brave enough. I think with, with social media, pay, like paid strategy, I think that they don't let things run long enough. Yeah. Um, and they should be a little bit braver sometimes. Let things, let Facebook do its job. Give step back, give it some room. Let its a powerful AI do the, do the work. <laughs> with it as well don't like fiddle you've got to strategically fiddle at intervals <laughs> my takeaway from the whole talk is going to be be brave enough <laughs> i like that part <laughs> yeah cool so, yeah uh, so that comes on the learning part what is something that uh, you as a marketer or maybe somebody who is into digital marketing or social media marketing always believe that uh, anybody who is uh, around us to learn marketing needs to uh, have one thing or two thing in their mind while they are doing it. So something I think uh, which will be an answer from you will be around uh, measuring numbers and those kind of things. So what are other things that you feel uh, that these are the prerequisites or maybe if you don't have this kind of skill set, try to build this thing. I think for social media marketing in general as, a, as a, something that I wish everybody knew would be that your organic and your paid activity um, don't have the same purpose and so it shouldn't okay. be measured the same and don't have the same goal so okay your organic is for building community and for getting feedback 
um, from your community and, and, and keeping top of mind and having fans. And the sales and the conversions are happening on your page. And, and if everybody knew that there were, you know, you don't try and sell things all the time to your community, you can post about products and, and things like that, you know, inter, intertwined with, with other things. Um, but don't expect to do a post um, to your fans who, you know, when you're first starting out are probably like your mum and your cousin, yeah. um, thinking that you're going to make a whole bunch of, of cash because they're, they're just separate. They just need, they need separate strategies. Great. I think uh, that is going to help a lot of people clear their mind because they start posting and then they expect results. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Camera, for joining us today. It was great having you. Uh, there are always things to learn from people, and I think people will be uh, very glad to hear the whole conversation and uh, maybe get uh, two, three more things in their marketing journey. Thanks a lot for uh, joining us today.